Crusader Kings 3 Released on the 1st of September 2020, this is one of Paradox's most recent games that has overall been relatively successful. This historical strategy game differentiates itself from other Paradox games, with a focus on individuals rather than countries like Europa Universalis IV. During the Middle Ages, kings had far more power and institutions in the medieval era were a lot weaker. Now, although Crusader Kings 3 is newer and has 3D rendered character models, it's still currently less popular than both EU4 and Hearts of Iron 4 since it has a far less active player base. It could be argued that one of the reasons for this is the lack of content in comparison to these other games. However, this dynamic is about to change with the new Royal Court DLC that gives players a completely different experience given that it will add a 3D rendered Royal Court to the game. Now maybe this isn't as amazing as a CK3 fishing game that competes with all the fishing simulators out there, but in this video we discuss how the Royal Court DLC is one of the most innovative DLCs we've seen from Paradox, and how it adds completely new life into the grand strategy genre as a whole. Also, we are trying to hit 60,000 subscribers by the end of the month, so if you love CK3 content that we're going to start producing on a regular basis, why not consider subscribing? We begin by first discussing what makes the Royal Court DLC so different to anything we've ever seen before from Paradox, and how it gives us some sense of where the developers wish to take the game. In my opinion, this DLC brings a new dynamic to Crusader Kings 3 that allows players to immerse themselves even more in the game, rather than just staring at a map for hours on end. Which, although I know loads of Paradox players love to do, what if instead you are able to do that, as well as transfer yourself into a courtroom? In my opinion, this immerses you in the life of a medieval ruler by letting you take control and experience firsthand what it was like to live as a medieval king or emperor. I suppose to compare it with a similar innovation to EE4 and Hearts of Iron 4, it would be like having a cabinet discussion meeting before an invasion with your commanders in Hearts of Iron 4, and likewise being able to have some sort of 3D immersion experience with diplomats in EE4. For example, as Albania, you could say the right things in a country court to gain peace with the Ottomans or gain an alliance with Byzantium. Now, not only the simple act of going into a courtroom gives the DLC immense value, but also the features that come with it. The courtroom will firstly be decorated with artifacts that you may come across, steal or create yourself. Instead of artifacts being 2D icons, which we've seen in both Crusader Kings 2 and Crusader Kings 3. You can now see the items you've collected in your courtroom as ornaments. Now you can impress your vassals of your collection of items. Not only this, but also your court will be decorated with flags representing your dynasty and culture. Artifacts will definitely be a main piece of this DLC, with events surrounding it and giving you bonuses and increasing grandeur. Grandeur is also a new feature added to the game, giving you a range of positive benefits such as increasing political opinion, being able to marry more easily, and creating stability in your realm. Your vassals don't want Bob from down the street ruling over them. They want someone with social importance, and therefore it definitely makes sense to add this into the game. The Royal Court DLC, in my opinion, will completely change the dynamic of the game, and another feature that has been added that supports this is court language. Historically, during the time of EU4, French was the global language of the time, due to France being a dominant power in Europe. Although this is outside the time frame of Crusader Kings 3, it is still relevant to the game. When William the Conqueror decisively gained England in 1066 at the Battle of Hastings, he brought his Norman customs over to England, and he continued to speak French in his courtroom. Similar to today, how English has spread throughout the world, language in the game will become a far more important aspect than it has been to date. Also, your court language over time may spread and taken up by lesser courts in the game, helping you develop ties with other kingdoms. An example of this may be the court language of Greek or French, which spreads throughout Europe due to Byzantium and France being the dominant power during that time. Another thing that has been added is a massive update to cultures, which makes sense given the sort of time period Crusader Kings 3 is in. Cultures were very significant, for developers now want to add hybrid cultures into the game, allowing you to combine your current culture with that of another. Now sadly, you can't form a hybrid culture 
with the other side of the world, so it's unlikely we're going to see a Norse Tunisian hybrid culture. More likely we'll see a Celtic Saxon hybrid culture, or a Germanic French hybrid culture. A really interesting part about this is that you can pick certain aspects from both of the cultures, such as the French language, but the German martial customs. Cultures now have pillars as well, allowing you to gain certain benefits and traditions. This new addition of cultures to Crusader Kings 3 may completely change the game and make it a lot better. Something else I think is really interesting to discuss as well are the new court positions that will be added into the game. This can be seen as an evolution from the Crusader Kings 2 minor titles with a number of improvements. Looking at a few positions, Bodyguard is an interesting one and prevents you from being assassinated. So, if your heir's a lot better than you, then I suggest you try and annoy your bodyguard as much as possible. There's also a food taster and a gardener in your court, so you can have some nice flowers in your castle. They've even added a gesture, with a great costume to entertain you while you have your court session. The final new feature I wish to talk about is the new court type events that can occur. In Crusader Kings 2, one of the main things people enjoyed is the amount of events and flavour added to the game. And so I believe these new events will add a lot more to the game. Exclusively within the CK3 court view, these new events can give you a lot more detail and it's easier to visualise these meetings taking place rather than just appearing on the screen as you're playing the game. Here are some examples of these court type events taking place. Based on the decisions, it seems like court events will either increase or decrease your opinion of one another, which could be the difference between starting a rebellion and gaining enough levies from your vassals to win a war. So given all these new features, this is by far one of Paradox's most innovative DLCs, adding a Bannerlord feel to Crusader Kings 3. So when is this DLC expected to be released, and will it increase the activity of the audience? Sadly, no announcement has been made as of yet. Earlier this year in the developer diaries, it was mentioned that it would be released later in 2021, but still no announcement has been made. Given that a lot of the new Paradox DLC has just been announced, it might be further delayed to spring next year, or potentially announced for it to be released in December. Given the complexity of making it, it's no wonder why they are taking so long, and rightfully so. Are you however excited for the new Crusader Kings 3 DLC? and think it will make the game far more enjoyable, or do you think Crusader Kings 3 still needs more content, and this DLC won't have that much of an impact overall? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.